incremental ratings. Let's continue with the pleasurable extension of the file guide to SuperMemo. In this case, let's see about the uses of SuperMemo, so the different applicabilities. So you may want to use SuperMemo for what? To learn a language, to learn programming, to read fiction, to watch videos incrementally? What are the, the possible usage? Usa usages? So, about making sure you do not forget. In every science, even art science, you still have to learn something by memory. Spoiler alert. Yes, you could use incremental reading with formal sciences, um, math, logics, but not because of the method, but because of the tool doesn't support modern standards, there will be a lot of friction. You don't have LaTeX and many modern standards, PDFs and so on that, mm, even though the best thing I could do is to follow this method, the tool that is implementing this uh, method lacks of those standards that kind of defeat the purpose for those domains. That doesn't mean you should not use it. With SuperMemo, you will see that it's old. So it depends on you if for you this creates friction, feel free to skip it. If it's not, you can tolerate that, please use it. There's no one single solution. I have seen tutorials that to my surprise, they were able to tolerate something I did not. It's, oh wow, okay, good for you, but not me, I cannot. And I have seen other tutorials that they learned how to do it. They have seen and experienced the power of, wow, this method is super powerful, yet they stopped doing it for some domains because of the friction. So Remo can also use it as a tool for creative problem solving. Yeah, to solve problems, for brainstorming, for incremental email, if you will, for even cataloging uh, images, your personal photos you take with the camera or phone, for watching videos, YouTube videos incrementally, and many other flows that not necessarily are related to learning, by the way. For instance, Piotr Wojniak, the creator of SuperMemo, has more than 26 collections because he has the, his flows. He uses one SuperMemo collection just for processing in email, when it's not that important that he imports that, and then he manages with priorities and eventually will reply or not, and some others, other flows. Uh, the email is just one example and incremental reading and a lot of stuff, even... Incremental writing, by the way. Writing, I write fiction and I'm starting to use SuperMemo for that. And me and my co-editor slash co-writer um, are honestly having a wonderful time inside of it. And I will show this inside this course, but... Uh, to some degree, he shows that. N not of, it's not what I expected. But the point is that you remember some anime, Japanese anime or American TV show that, that went for decades or very long time. What happened? So at least for mangas, usually it's one single author that does all of the storytelling. And they release one chapter per week. So after 10 years, they have forgotten details. And then there are loopholes in, in the history. You saw why this is, for instance, in Dragon Ball is, oh, what, this character is no longer relevant, now it doesn't even appear, no one mentions that character, like if it's forgotten, or one superpower that was kind of uh, forgotten, something like that. Some details that then mix the history um, with some small inaccuracies and so on. Why? Because the author himself or herself has for genuinely forgotten part of her own or his or her own story. So what you could do if you do fiction is you could, as how far does, you could keep this in super memo. So you keep the um, characters, the profile of the characters, the, their history, their past, the relationships, how they interacted with the characters and so on. So you have all of the plot in memory. So you keep this especially if you want to do a plot that is quite complex, which could, may happen in, uh, non -fi in fiction. But first of all, 
there's so many usages and hmm. um, there's so much usage you can get from Superman, like so much. The problem is you have to commit. Yes, you have to commit in the beginning, but keep in mind it's not that, that catastrophic that you have to endure pain, be boring. For me, it has not been boring. At some point, I think it's the only time that I swear, that was on record, I filmed my first about 40 hours using Super Memo, and I lost the patience at some degree, at some point, that this is almost unheard of for me. So I reached that point. Imagine how, let's say, triggering can be, Super Memo can be. But once you understand incrementalism, these transfers, so if, we, if I now have a new flow, for instance, for me, it will be using Super Memo to play an instrument. Um, it is a lot easier because I already got incrementalism. It is a different perspective, a different flavor, and an al a different analogy. So let's say that I'm an ice maker. So I already know how to do ice cream. Yeah, what I perhaps I never tried is to do an ice cream a van with vanilla, chocolate, and that's it, right? Hey, now I have a no, lemon ice cream. Oh, this needs certain acidity. There's some requirements here and there. So I never tried, but bro, I already know how to do ice creams, not this one particularly. So this will be a lot easier because a lot of skills do transfer. So don't worry if I sound way too catastrophic. So if I want now to do incremental email, yeah, I will be get familiar what I need to press or the settings of the um, upcoming email, how to store an email that I read. If it's read in the cloud, but not in super memo, then if when I see this in super memo, do I delete the one in the cloud? You will have those questions. But the, the big picture of the um, flow, the use case, using super memo for incremental email is not a big deal already. So I will stop here the use cases of Super Memo, and see you in the next video.